to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. It's Power Talk Friday. Today, my guest is Danielle Hendon, owner of Four Corners CFO. Danielle empowers business owners to pay themselves what they're worth. Yay, music to my ears. Had me at hello sentence, right? Danielle puts more profit into your pocket every year by helping you understand what your financial numbers are and how they work within your business. She has the technical knowledge and over a decade of experience in corporate finance and accounting, and she's figured out how to scale this to small businesses to fit our budget and our needs. Now, I have to say, I'm extremely proud of you for clicking on this episode because I know that many of us prefer to bury our head just a tiny bit in the sand when it comes to finances. I get it. I love sales, not so much finances. I get it. All right. But as much as you want to focus on the pretty and I want to focus on the sales, we have to tackle finances. All right. And it's hard for us as creatives to find that ideal bookkeeper or CPA because the language does seem so foreign. But what's really wonderful about Danielle is that she doesn't talk in that foreign language. She doesn't talk so that we don't understand. She and her team offer calculations information and tools in an understandable way so that you can do what you want to do which is understand the numbers of your business okay so today Danielle will share her six-part framework that she uses to help her clients understand their numbers happy to introduce you to Danielle hey Danielle thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today Thank you so much for having me, Luann. I love, love doing this. So here's the thing. So often this happens. My audience knows me. Like we have pre-air conversation. Everybody's always like, oh, how am I going to get to know her? What am I going to know? And like, they don't know. Like I'm definitely going to spend 15 minutes. Sometimes it's 45 minutes (laughs) (laughs) before we hit record. So here's the thing. We have just been chatting for 45 minutes and um, I'm super excited to have this actual on-air conversation with you, Danielle, because our industry is in desperate need of competent, caring, compassionate, knowledgeable people that function as a fractional CFO or function as a finance type of um, advisory. Of course, my audience already knows that we have Kim Merletti, we've got designer, uh, you know, uh, P- CPA Peter Lang, we've got Michelle Williams, and we have our people. There are others, Carla Titus, there are others. But, you know, there's like, 70,000 designers in the U.S., not to mention globally, (laughs) and we all need somebody to help us. So I love when I run into another person, and I love, and my audience also knows this of me, and this is what I've learned from talking with you the last 45 minutes. I love when the finance person is also a human person, and they talk in language that even Luann can understand, because Luann is not a finance brain. And that's, um, Danielle, that's so valuable. Valuable. And I know you work with other creatives and service providers right now. You do have an interior design firm that you're working with. And I, I, I have to believe that you know that that is a component, that a creative person is looking for somebody that isn't looking at us like, how do you not know this, right? 100%. One of the best compliments I've ever received from a client is that you are not like the stuffy CPA sitting in a chair telling me what to do with my business. Because that's not my job. My job is to give information in an understandable way so you can do what you want to do in your business. 
Exactly. I love it. I love it. And um, so so here's the thing. I asked you a couple of questions, which led to our 45 minute. Now we're just going to do it over again. OK, so, <laughs> so what I wanted to know is and I'm sure this is exactly what's going through everyone's mind is. But how? But how do you function and stand alongside of me, especially if. I am less than knowledgeable at this point. Like when I'm not coming to the table, because I feel like if I'm coming to the table fully versed in my numbers, I probably don't need a CFO. Like I do if I get bigger, if I'm running a multiple million dollar business, right? But it's really those of us that are not versed in balanced statements and P&Ls. And I was like, so walk me through how you take me from don't really get it to I have a working understanding. And you said that you have a six part framework, which I love. We all love a good process. Like you, you started speaking my love language right there. <laughs> so, so walk us through your six part framework for a designer. Who's like, that's it. This is the thing. 2024. I am done. I'm making steps in 2023. And in 2024, I am going to be king of my finances. Yes, right? let's do it. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to start by saying everybody comes to me and they know they need a budget or they want help with cash flow. Those are going to be the very last thing we touch in the framework. Okay. So most people come to you because they know they need a budget or because they're having trouble understanding how to manage their cash flow, which translation to us means manage their pipeline, right? Yeah. And your bank account, like what's in the bank account and how do we keep money there? Right, 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 right. Okay. So that seems like very logical to me. I can see those as two big pain points. I know in the coaching that I've done with the designers, it is that it's like, okay, I've got three $500,000 projects now, but I don't know what's happening in four months from now. How do I make these decisions? And so this is at the core of what you help business owners, interior designers understand about their business. It is, but it's the last part we touch before we can even get to budget and cash flow. You've got to set the foundation. So in that six part framework, the very first step, and I'm going to use accounting words, is your balance sheet. We've got okay. to look at your balance sheet and make sure that your bookkeeper is reconciling them. Or if you're doing the bookkeeping, that you're reconciling them. If your balance sheet doesn't reconcile, we're missing something somewhere on your P&L and you're not okay. looking at all the numbers. Okay. And the thing is, my experience, both personal experience and conversations, is that it is possible that you can have a bookkeeper that is not reconciling your books and is not making sure the information is jiving. I mean, I'm not crazy, right? There are professionals yeah. out there that you can pay that are not doing this part. And when we don't know that that part, what it looks like to be done, how they, that's how they get away with it because we don't know that it's not happening and we don't have the ability to monitor them. Or you'll have even some of the best intentioned bookkeepers will reconcile cash and they won't go into your debt if you've got loans on the book, if you've got, they're not getting into those other balance sheet accounts that are still mm. going to have that same effect on your P&L. I've seen, I've seen people come to me and they had a loan, like an idle loan, and the bookkeeper wasn't booking it to the balance sheet at all. It all hit the P&L. Oh, wow. So your debt yeah. just sat there. Oh my God. I can't tell you how many times I've, I've had a conversation with a designer who said to me, I'm paying another bookkeeper again to completely go back and go through all of my books and clean things up. I've had designers tell me that they've done that two and three times over a two to four year period. And oh. the thing is to me, what's so frustrating about it is it's kind of, I always use the same analogy. It's like bringing your car into a mechanic. It's like, I got a noise. Oh, well, that's a $20,000 this. Well, is it or is it a $2 this? But when you don't know how to diagnose your car, you're mm -hmm. at their will. And so you start your first framework piece is the foundation is going through and explaining this, lo looking at it with your client so that we can begin to understand what it should look like or what it means to reconcile the entire business, not just a portion of it. 
Yes, because in addition to your PL being everyone knows PL. If I asked any of your your listeners right now, they're gonna know their revenue, they're gonna know what their their income levels are. We all know the PL really well as as business owners. We don't always look at the balance sheet. And the balance right. sheet affects your PL. It's what makes sure we're reliable, but it is also the strength of your business. The balance sheet tells you what your business is worth. And that's okay. an important number to know. Okay. Okay. Now, one thing is, so we, so the first thing is, is we're going to get this foundation section and you're going to talk to us about the, pa- the balance sheet and the P and L and the various things. And then what happens is we like, if I'm, if, if this is my first time having an in-depth conversation, can I ask you 20 questions? You're like, no, you got to come with some knowledge. Like, how does that work? Danielle? Oh no, I love questions. I love questions and helping people understand things in a way that makes sense to them. And that goes into, as we start going into part two and three and looking at revenue and expense and things like that, we're going to talk to the bookkeeper and we're going to rearrange some things because you need to be able to pull up your statements and know what they mean. And if you can't understand them, we need to move things around, put things in different places, relabel things. You should be able to open those balance sheet and income statement, P&L. And know what all of those lines mean. Know what they stand for. Know what they represent. Okay. So what I'm hearing in there is this is, so your framework, let me just backtrack for a second. So your framework also can happen in a one day VIP day. We didn't say that part, right? So it can happen a six hour VIP day. And that is the first section of the VIP day, the first hour. I may or may not leave that hour with complete clarity or whatever, but I'm leaving with enough information to know what I didn't know to have a conversation with the bookkeeper and then maybe to come back to you because, I, like I said, I'm ahead of you guys because I already did this for 45 minutes with Danielle. <laughs> okay. So what it is is you have this VIP day and then for 30 days you can ask 9,000 and follow-up questions, and then you have a one-hour um, strategy session follow-up after the 30 days to nail it all down. So, because the only reason I'm going and clarifying all this, Danielle, I know I'm doing a lot of talking, is because I am this person. I am this person that is knows enough to be dangerous. Everybody knows I have a VIN man and I have a mom. My mom is my bookkeeper. The VIN man is the CFO. Like, let's be serious, right? And so I know that when I have these conversations with them, I do have lots of questions and I do eventually get there, but it's rarely just because they explained it to me. That's all I'm Yes. Out, and we right? actually, in a VIP day, I record every single session so that you can go back and rewatch and be like, wait, what? Let me try that again. And how did that happen? And where was that at? So that Great. you know how to get it. I also in a VIP day session, have all of our clients drive. I want you to physically click, feel, touch, do, get the feeling of it while we're doing it and have me talking through it and help you understand what you're doing so that you get that muscle memory that goes with it as well. Like, oh, that's where I clicked to find that. That's, you know what, that's, that's, that's actually might seem silly, but I, we all know it's important. <laughs> like just remembering <laughs> what you did. Right. So awesome. Okay. So step one is this foundation, like understanding just the general aspects of the business of, from a financial standpoint. And then what happens in step two, Danielle? Step two is understanding your revenue. And I'm positive all of you are going to say, oh, I know what my revenue is. We know what the revenue line is. But then my question is, how many different services or packages or however you're structuring those projects, how many of them do you have? How are they bucketed? How are they categorized? What's the differences between them? What is your most profitable service? Love and that. if you don't know that, then we need to figure that out because you want to know what's most profitable so you can put the most marketing dollars on the most profitable service and make the most money. Right. Right. No, that's so true. I mean, that's something that Vinny's always talking about. We always talk about that in Exciting Windows about, you know, what products get, give you the best ROI? Because if you, you know, there's so many times in a window treatment consultation, I can offer a shutter, I can offer a Roman shade. But if I can make the same net, like, you know, the gross profit, I should say, on a Roman shade, but the Roman takes a half hour to install and the shutter takes an hour and a half, like, 
Now, I just hear myself, anybody that sells window treatments, they're like, really? What's the chances that a Roman shade and a shutter, right? Right? <laughs> right. But my uh, my designers are going, if a Roman shade is appropriate, then a shutter probably isn't. So I get that. It was a wrong analogy. However, <laughs> but that's just it, right? What is the ROI? The people cost part of it. And even I bet most of your designers aren't necessarily considering the people cost that goes into providing a product or service. Yeah. How many hours does it take? Because that is a cost and that needs to come off your top line before you consider what's most profitable. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, we do, we do. We talk about that all the time. It's like, here are the different, like you're saying for, for designers, it might be services, the, 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 the types of projects, kitchen and bath or, you know, renovations or, you know, refreshes, but where do you make the most money? What is your, what is your best level of, um, you know, revenue generator, right? So yep. you spend some time figuring that out. So it's not just looking at the number. This is your gross revenue. It's like breaking it down and understanding where the actual dollars are earned in the business. Yep. And that goes back to we're going to work with the bookkeeper and make sure if we're in a my other package, my focus CFO, where we do the doing for you and just make sure you have all the right information that you need to make decisions. We are going to interact with that bookkeeper and say, hey, look, we need more than one line in revenue. We need to know this, 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 and this. So when she or he opens their books, they know exactly what made what. How much money did each thing make? And making sure that we're tracking your project costs related to the projects. And I, I know that you know this, and I know it from working with many business owners too, is that when we do it by our gut feel, it's almost, oh, oh I'm pretty, oh, my most profitable projects are, you know, bathrooms. And it's like, oh, actually, they're not. <laughs> like, it takes almost as much time to do a bathroom as a kitchen, and it doesn't generate nearly as much money, right? Like, that's, I think, probably a lot of designers actually already know that. Um, but there's a point where you don't know that, where you think, well, the bathroom is a third the size of the kitchen, right? And But I have to, I know that the exponential information that goes into a kitchen is probably not as much as the exponential dollars that go onto the kitchen project. And by the way, I'm also guessing right now, but that is the point. It's somebody has to do that analysis, right? Yes. And yeah. once you know revenue, the, the next step, honestly, probably the first step before we talk profit margins is, are you charging enough? Mm. So many business owners are not charging enough, especially right now, as we're recording this in this very high inflationary time, are you charging enough for your services? Are you valuing what your hour and time is worth? And this is revealed in these conversations about what the different revenue generators are in your, your company and the ROI of the difference. Because what you're explaining, I think I'm hearing is once you really get into the weeds, this is when you see what it actually costs for you to do something. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm not charging enough, right? Like that's, it's revealed from the other way. A lot of times yep. in business, we're, we're working with uh, designers and other business owners to just have them really just stand in their value, just step up and recognize their uniqueness. But this is the other way. It's like, oh, wait. I ended up, when I do a kitchen renovation, I get $40 an hour by the time I'm charging this way. It's like, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> oh, man, those moments when you're like, I, I know you're worth more than this. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I've, I started off in a CPA firm. And the last thing you want to do as a CPA in a CPA firm is calculate your hourly rate because it doesn't look pretty. <laughs> but it's so revealing. And then you've got the different pieces. Are you buying the materials? Are you marking up material? Like what, what all goes into that project? Right. And what is your, like you said, the ROI or in finance terms, I would say your profit margin at right. the end of the day, right. how much profit are we really making? Cause profit is what we get to put in your pocket. Exactly. Exactly. I love it. Okay. So we go through the whole revenue section and then what's the next step, Danielle? Expense. So we all know you can try to cut costs. We're going to try to cut costs. Everyone knows unsubscribe from the thing you forgot you subscribed to. <laughs> we take it a step further. We pull a list of all your expenses year to date. We get rid of all the duplications, figure out the frequency of stuff. But then we're going to sit down and we're going to put them in three buckets. 
you're going to have what I call your required costs, the things that you have to have to run your business. I don't know a single business owner that can run a business without cell phone and internet today. Right. So those are required to keep the business running. You have what I call personal perks, the things your tax CPA or EA told you to run through the business because you can deduct it, but it actually adds value to you, the business owner, not to the business itself. So those are going to be our personal perks. And when we start to run some comp compensation calculations, we kind of consider that part of our owner's compensation because it's a perk you're getting as an owner. Mm -hmm. And then every single line that's left that is not required or a personal perk is an investment in your business. And we want to go line by line and ask, what is the return on that investment in time, money, or both? And this does two things. It helps us identify the things that are not serving our business and get creative about how we might do something differently. But it also helps us to identify what we in the finance world call KPIs, key performance mm. indicators. So if you have a marketing expense in your business and you are trying to figure out if it is returning on that investment, we're going to ask, how do you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I know because I got consult calls. Okay. How many consult calls did you get? Oh, I don't know. Okay. So let's start tracking that. That is a key performance indicator for that cost. And are you tracking that they actually came from that specific marketing attempt and making sure that where we're spending money is making you money? Mm. I will also say when it comes to that required category, it can get a little sticky and people will think that something's required when it's a little bit of a mix of required <laughs> and investment. Right. It feels required. It feels like you have to do it. And I'll use myself as an example. So as a CPA, I have to have continuing education units. I have to maintain this education every year to get my certification renewed. I could go to a conference and spend thousands of dollars on eight hours or 16 hours of CPE, or I could go spend $200 for an online website that gives me all these articles and unlimited access to CPE. So the CPE is required, but I could go get it for $200. So if I'm going to go to a conference instead for 2000 then that conference needs to give a return on investment in some other way. Okay. And the thing is, it will. It will when yeah. you go to a conference. And yeah. we were talking about this before. A lot of people, when it comes to these expenses, your tax CPAs, we're getting close to Q4. They're going to start telling you, spend that cash. Get That's the right. cash out the door. We don't <laughs> want it on your books when That's we right. file the taxes. That's right. That's what they don't necessarily remind you is to make sure when you spend that cash that it is giving you a return on your investment. And Luann and I were talking specifically about conferences and how great those can be as a return on your investment, and especially with hers coming up as well. Get something <laughs> Shameless out of plug it. for Luann Live. Shameless. Go, go spend the money where you're going to get a return on investment. Please, 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 please do not just go buy a car so that you can spend money. That's the thing. Like that, This is what we were talking about. It was like, okay, so I'm going to get a different, like, if you need a car, go buy a car. But I hear so many Business owners at Q4 will have this conversation like around September or October, so right at the end of Q3, with their CPA, and they'll be like, okay, you got to like, you know, got to spend some money, sweetie. You made some good money. Go spend it. And it's like, great. If you need a car, great. But I love your point, Danielle, and this is how it came up in our other part conversation is because spend it on something that is going to be the right kind of write-off for your business, but can it give you another? Another ROI. So yes, you can buy a car and that's awesome, but you can also attend a conference and you can come away with inspiration and ideas and networking and all the things and also have, you know, Dive, divested your checkbook a little bit for <laughs> tax purposes. Yes. And my thing is, so it's great to save money on taxes. Most of us are in like a 20% effective tax rate. So if you go spend $50,000 on a car, you're really not saving $50,000. Right. You're just saving 20%. Right, 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 right. Yeah, there was um, one of the Facebook groups, the, this, as we're recording this week, um, Leslie Crothers, I think it was her Facebook group. And she was just like, this is the time 
go. You know, she like she was like, I bought all my conference tickets for this year, and I bought all my plane tickets for High Point and for all. Like this is the time. Go do it if you've got the money in your checkbook and you've had a thoughtful conversation with your bookkeeper and your CPA about what really is yours to spend. Like don't be spending the money for you know the furniture on plane tickets to come to Luann Live. But you know, like and that's what she said. She said like really at this fourth quarter you probably are getting advice to make some ex- to make spend some money and her advice was the same spend it on things that are also going to create more money for you right yes yeah spend it. it in places that give you a return yeah and that's yeah. what we do so the expense side part of it is us learning what are those recurring expenses and starting to map things out for your budget which is part 5 4 part four. (laughs) But the other part is making sure it's working for your business. Make your money work for you. Yeah. And I do want to offer an idea that isn't just, you know, self-serving to go to Luann Live. I'm just, I'm (laughs) thinking about it. You know, I know in past years at Window Works, as we've gotten to this part of the year, uh, third and fourth quarter, when we have looked at the checkbook, Vinny will I'm talking particularly back in the day when we did a lot of print advertising. We we used to have a print advertising budget of over $100,000, okay? And he would call the different represents, representatives for the different magazines that we would in in November. And he'd say, you know, bring your rate sheet, let me see it, blah, blah, blah. And maybe it was, you know... $6,000 if you did two spots over the year and it was, they went down to 5000 a piece if you did four spots or whatever it was. And he would look at them and he would say, okay, here's the thing. Like, I want the cover, the inside cover. I want the back cover, whatever he would say. And I want, he would ask for one or two more spots and he'd say, and I'll write a check in full now if I get this deal. Right. And so he, we Those knew, are my favorite stories right? when you prepay and you yes. get a deal and you get a tax write off. Right. Oh my gosh. I love those. Yeah. So yes, I would love for you to spend your money to come to Luann live, but there are other ways to make your investments at the end of the year. <laughs> and that makes me so totally unrelated to the six part framework, but a conversation I'm having with all of my clients right now and with their CPAs, most of my clients, and I'm sure much of your listeners are in that kind of S corp frame Mm -hmm. of things where you're giving yourself payroll and you're also taking profit distributions. If you have not taken profit distributions to date, it might be time to pause payroll and take profit distributions instead for the rest of the year. The goal is always to hit kind of a 50-50 mix of what's on your payroll and your W-2 wages and what's in your profit distributions. And when you take those distributions, you're not paying the taxes on them. Oh, see, now you just taught me something there. There's the price of admission right there. Okay. (laughs) So my mom is now listening and going, oh, wait, we got to (laughs) go. Patty, our CPA. (laughs) Okay. And you always want to check in with your tax preparer, make sure they believe the same thing. Different tax preparers have different gray areas and guidelines and things like that. Okay. So what you're saying is if I'm the owner of the company and I've been on payroll all year and I have not been doing it through profit distributions, it's worth the conversation right now. We're talking in August, September of 2023 to say, should I come off payroll for the last quarter and just go to profit distribution? Very interesting. I'm going to be asking the VIN man as soon as we're done. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So that's awesome. So now we're to step four is budget. Right? Which is my favorite. And I'm going to talk about it quickly because I know it can get very complex and convoluted. But a budget is just a plan. It's a plan forward. It's a path for your business. We take everything we've learned from the revenue conversation and how your pipeline and project are projects are lined up. We take everything we've learned from the expense conversation and any homework I've given you to cancel things. And we build out a budget for the rest of the year. We look at what is this business going to look like at 1231? How much money are we making? And then we ask ourselves, is this where we want to be? If it's where you want to be, great. Let's make sure we stay on that track. If it's not, we can take action today to change the path. And where do you want it to go? And it just becomes a conversation. And it really is as simple as a conversation. Where do we want it to go? And what I love about what I get to do with clients is when somebody comes to me and your gut's telling you you need to do something. As a business owner, we all know that, like, I've got to do this, but I don't know if I can. My answer is always yes, 
but let's figure out how. Mm. Let's figure out where we can sacrifice, what we need to sacrifice, what changes need to happen to make this happen. Because if you've come and asked me, the answer is we need to do it. You, you want to do it. Let's and figure you, out you how. You feel like it's a good idea. Let's figure out the way to make it happen. Right. I love that. You know, I love that because, you know, probably 80 to 90 percent of us that own a business are the visionary person. So we've got the ideas. You know what I'm saying? It's like and I know myself personally, it's, you know, 9000 ideas in a day, a week, a month. But I'll bring five ideas like, you know, to Vinny or to Stephanie or to Diana or whoever. And just like, you know, bah, 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 this is the thing. You know what I mean? And at that point when I've got it, it's just figure out a way to make this happen for me because I'm already there. <laughs> yep. If it's coming to me, if I have someone calling and saying, hey, we need to hire someone. Okay. How do we make that work? Exactly. Let's figure out a way. And I love it because it might mean that I have to make some hard decision in other areas, but it's my prerogative to say that this makes, this is a higher priority for me. Or you look at me and say, you can't have it all, sweetie. Which one do you want? Never mind. I won't hire now. I want to keep this thing over here. <laughs> yep. And that's okay. what a budget does. It gives us the ability to project your right now and take it into the future and figure out where it's going to go. So that's all in that kind of part four piece. And I would say um, for interior designers, this is is particularly important part of the framework because what I mentioned at the top of the show is it you just don't know when the next project is coming and you don't know if the next one is a ten thousand dollar project or a, a million dollar project or a five hundred like you just don't no. And once you get up and running and you're well established, you've got some rhythm and you can kind of count on some things. And you also have got some revert reserves also. You know what I mean? Like Window Works is a very cyclical business, but it's a mature business. And, you know, Vinny and JC, they run it with an eye to the cycles, right? That we're not going to, and it doesn't mean we never get caught like holy cannoli, right? <laughs> but we're not going to get caught to the point that our doors will close at this point. But in the beginning, the first like three to five years of your business, trying to really understand that cycle is, that's a critical thing, right, Danielle? It is an understanding what I'm going to call your baseline. What are all mm. of the expenses that have to get paid for your business to stay open, to keep the lights on? What is the baseline? Because yeah. when you're in that, and we'll get to cash flow in a minute, but when you're in that feast or famine, you've got to know what your reserve needs to be. And it may not be that you have it physically. And we talked about this a little bit before too. You may not have savings for that reserve, but we need to have somewhere to turn for mm -hmm. that reserve. Right. And as you're getting these projects, if you can put a little bit of, a, of it aside, that's great. If you can't, I tell every client I have, to get a line of credit. I know. I do the and same thing. Make sure <laughs> Coaching, you I'm like, have do you have a, a line of credit? Net. Exactly. <laughs> right. You ha you know what? It's a grown up business. Like, right? And 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 the thing about it is, is I know that people, I, I know I've had the conversations. I've had many chairman of the boards like this. Oh, you know, I, I say to them once, a week later, they boxer me. I have my line of credit. I'm like, yay, good for you. Right. And then others have been like, well, I don't know. And I don't need it. And I'm just like, sweetie, it's not, it's just, it's insurance. It hurt. Right? It's insurance. It's insurance. We're not paying on it if we're not borrowing it. But if you hit a rough patch and you plan to be in business, this isn't a hobby. This is a real thing. Like, we need to do like certain things, right? And so, and inevitably, I, we were talking about this a little before too. Life happens. There has not been a single year in business that something hasn't happened. Right. Life will continue to happen. Yeah, yeah. So it's you funny need to have a safety net. I had a chairman of the board a couple of years ago, and she was one of those that like literally got off the call, and an hour later, I got text messages. I just got this line of credit, that line of credit. I'm good. And then about six months later, she needed to go into them. And it's not an easy thing to go into your line of credit. Like it's easy to get it usually, right? But it's not an easy thing to go into it. And I never underestimate what that feels like to go yep. into it. But the thing was that she learned in three months she had paid it back again and it just got her through as opposed to well, do I not get paid? Do I not pay the studio? Like what doesn't happen when I don't have it? Right. Yep. And so I, 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 I'm glad to know that you agree. Well, of course I learned that from Benny. I didn't 
come up with that on my well, own. Well, and it gives you wiggle room. It gives you it gives you space to breathe and yeah. make the decisions that are going to move your business forward. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And he calls it cost to be open number. What's the cost to be open number just to t- put the lights on. How much am I going to spend this month? Right. So yep. that's awesome. Okay. And then step five is my second favorite second only to building the budget <laughs> is comparing the budget to your actuals. A budget's only as good as using it. So making sure that your actual revenue, your actual expenses are coming in the way we forecast them which is almost never going to happen. And when it doesn't, we ask why. Mm. If revenue came in really high, I want to know what we did and how we do it again. Mm. If expenses are coming in high, I want to know if we need to tweak the budget or do we need to change what we're doing today to stay on track for where you want to be. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And of course, our, what, when does this process start? Do you do it every quarter? Do you like, how do you do it? How, what is your cadence there? Because we're not going to build it today and compare it tomorrow, right? Yes. So you're going to compare it at most, usually once a month. Oh, okay. If you're a smaller business, you might go once a quarter. Okay. But I highly recommend once a month also because it gets business owners in the habit of looking at the numbers once a month and not just sticking our head in the sand and watching the bank account and hoping and praying everything goes the way we thought it would. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that, that's, you know, we, <laughs> you know, we could do that. Yeah, we can. So it's creators. easier sometimes. Yeah. We're creative. We're just like, wait, you know, I would, you know, what's so funny is what I've had to really adjust as the last uh, four or five years I've taken this business off of window works, right? Is for 35 years, I had many hats that I wore in window works, but the primary hat that I wore was drive sales, just drive sales, Mm -hmm. right? It didn't mean that I wasn't part of the conversations about expenses or about expansion or about employee hiring and all of that. But ultimately it was if you make another hundred thousand in sales this month and he can hire another installer, like it was always, you go do that and I'll manage this. And that was a big change for me in this business because I still just want to put my head down and sell. And I'm like, Oh, see, sweetie, you're like, you're all your designers. You have to like put your head up and look at numbers. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the ease as business owners. It's what we go to. It's what everyone said. Just go sell more, go sell more, go sell more. Yeah, yeah. But really there's, there's three different profit levers and we've talked about all three of them. It's raise your rates, sell your most profitable and cut your costs. Yeah. All of those will increase your profit, not yeah. just selling more. Love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I was only concerned with one forever, I have to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's totally normal. I mean, we all do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and also, you know, it's it's it, usually it's your superpower. You're pe- like, whether you're a designer, you're passionate about your design. You know what I mean? Like, whatever it is, you're a window treatment person, you're like, you know, selling your stuff, right? So it's, a, it's an interesting switch of a CEO hat is the point, right? And yes, so this is the, all the, the hats, the curve, the <laughs> learning curve. And then we have the final step six. What is step six? Okay. We all know cash is king. And we said that everybody comes and they want step six as step one, but you really need a budget to get a good cash flow forecast because I do not deal in cash flow statements. Most accountants I know are not fans of putting together a cash flow statement. And I don't think I know a single business owner that wants to look at a cash flow statement. They want to know where cash is going to go and where it's at. And cash flow statements can be really confusing, but cash flow forecasts tell you where the money's going. And we use the budget to do that. So you got to get to the budget point and then we layer in the timing and we forecast out the cash. And then we add in the three components of cash that will never show up on your budget. Your debt is never going to show up on your budget because mm-hmm. your budget's based on a P&L and your debt's sitting on your balance sheet. Mm. So when you're paying down debt, that has to be in your cash flow forecast. It has to come out of the bank account but it's not sitting in the budget. So your budget might look like you got all the money in the world, but your cash flow forecast might look a little different. Interesting. The other one that is not going to show up on your budget is going to be your savings, whether it's operational savings for that putting away the rainy day fund or tax savings, Mm. because we need to be ready to pay our tax bill at the end of the year. Yes, that is a big thing that we're always saying in this industry is put your tax money away every single job. Put it in a different account. Don't touch it. You know, and I mean, it's painful enough to write the darn check, let alone when you have the money. (laughs) Yes, put it out of sight, out of mind. Don't touch it. And then if you don't owe that much, give yourself a bonus and be happy. That's it. That's it. Oh, my goodness. I love it. That's so good. So the interesting thing in there in the cash flow 
is I think what I was also hearing is when you're talking about cash flow forecasting, it is that component of like, it used to be, I don't know, like window treatments, it used to be that we couldn't, we couldn't get in the black in a January or February. I don't care what you did. You could not make a dollar over cost to be open in January or February. It's starting to change a little bit less cyclical, tiny bit less compared to like, I mean, I'm telling you 25 years ago, we could with within 2% accuracy, literally project our gross sales by month like crazy and it's a little crazier now it's a little more melded there's it's there's still a um a up and down of it but it's not as precise the thing about it is is what i think i'm hearing you're talking about in cash flow conversation of step 6 is we're having the conversation that in January, we're going to have the same cost to be open number, but we're going to have a reduced revenue. And so how are we projecting and forecasting the cash flow to be okay in all the months? Is that what this step is about, Danielle? Yep. And it's saying how to the very bottom line, and I do cash flow forecasting, it's going to look just like your budget. It's going to have some groupings that look like a budget because that's what makes sense to business owners. Mm -hmm. And that bottom line is going to say, what's in the bank account? What is in the bank account at the end of January? What's in the bank account at the end of February? And making sure, A, we don't go negative, but B, that we're taking care of those other important things that don't show up in your budget and we're planning for them. We're planning to make the payments on debt. We're planning to put away money for taxes. And last but not least, we're planning to pay ourselves Mm -hmm. some profit distributions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. It used to be so ridiculously predictably cyclical that he would prepay car payments and you know health insurance like anything in the September through December quarter because he was just like you, you know you guys aren't going to bring me sales in January and February I know it <laughs> like I'm not going to have deposits yeah. <laughs> we're going to have balance dues from installs but we're not going to have the the cash flow from deposits right yep so and you need cash is king that is at the end of the day that is what makes or breaks a business you don't go out of business because you didn't have a budget or you didn't know your numbers you go out of business because you ran out of money right right, and we don't want anyone to be there no oh my goodness i love it it's so good so here's the thing danielle to work with you they can do the vip day they can work with so so as I understand it, the VIP day, the goal is with all of the, the, the recordings and the one month of questions and answers and the follow-up is to get someone to the point where they feel pretty successful, like they can manage this and understand this on their own. And they can buy future strategy sessions from you quarterly to have some check-ins. But then you also do have a done-for-you service where you're just like, hey, hire us as your CFOs, your fractional CFO, and we get it all done. And so that's the two levels of services pretty much, right? Yes, because either you want, either you're at the place where you maybe can't afford a done for you CFO, and that, in my mind, my my vision is that everybody has access to these big business finance concepts, and I want to make them accessible to everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do through the VIP day is kind of a done with you, so that you can figure out how to do it, and you feel like you still have a partner in this, but we aren't doing all of the work for you. Versus the done for you, we take that six part, we spread it out over six months, and we do all the doing, and we. We come bring you the questions and the information and help as you're going through whatever that next big step is that you want to take in your business. I love it. I think it's so awesome. I love always when there's, you know, a place to meet each type where we're at and what we need. And that's so fun. So this has been fantastic. I really appreciate you. I love any, like I said, I said at the top, um, for me, the criteria of a finance person is they have to understand that a creative has a very highly developed skill set that's valuable. And just because it doesn't know how to calculate numbers doesn't mean it's not. <laughs> it's just no, that's boring. why we love calculating numbers for you. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like these men and women in my audience could make your home look crazy, right? Like just so amazing. We need people to do this for us, right? Yes. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much for joining me today, Danielle. I appreciate your being here with us. Thank you so much for having me, Luann. I really hope that people are able to take something and do something with this because at the end of the day, knowledge is power when you use it. If you 
you are not absolutely keen on the financial aspects of your business, I get it. You know, I have the Vincennes though, right? And it may only just be you taking care of it though, at least for some point in time, or it might be you overseeing a bookkeeper. And if you don't have that understanding and the bookkeeper doesn't happen to be, or this, you know, the person advising you doesn't happen to be a person that you trust most in this world. Like for me, I've got my mom and Vincennes, right? So the thing is, I still am working each week, each month and striving to understand more of this because it is, it's refreshing when you understand it and the conversations are like, you're really part of it. You know, this difference when you have worked with maybe an electrician, um, about say motorization, smart home motorization is a good example. The first couple of times you're like, yeah, okay, this is what I wanted to do. Are you saying you're going to make it happen? And you're sort of waiting when you get to the house to see if your client's smart home and all the gadgets and the lights and the, you know, the blinds and everything all works because you really didn't understand the conversation. You knew what you wanted, but you really didn't get it. And you really didn't know when they repeated back to you what they were going to do if it was right until you saw it. And I know that there is that phase for us with our numbers, for many of us, of course, not all of us. I've interviewed many of you that just get it and yay, you know, let me just bow at your feet all day long. Okay. But Imagine that journey when after dozens of conversations with the smart home technology people, you get it now. Now you know exactly what you have to specify. You know exactly what you're going to get. And you're not sitting there waiting to the project reveal to see if you push a button, it all works. And that is the difference of understanding your money. That is the difference, okay? So I always encourage you to hire that financial person, but I encourage you to understand what they're doing so that you own it, okay? And we've had many people um, on the show. We've got Peter Lang, Michelle Williams, Kimberly Merlitti, and now Danielle, okay? So let's get to Danielle's six-part framework, Handling Your Finances. She said everyone who wants to get to the good stuff first, you know, the budget and the cash flow, but they're the last part of the framework, okay? So we have to set the foundation. This is where you straighten out your balance sheet. And Danielle says, this is the strength of your business, okay? Um, we've had other episodes that have talked about this, so you're probably not to, you know, surprised to hear this, but if your balance sheet doesn't reconcile, then something is off in your P&L. Okay. So there are professionals out there. I know it. I have had personal coaching clients of you that have bookkeepers out there that are not reconciling the books. Okay. This cannot happen. It is not allowed to happen. It's one thing, God help you. If you're doing your own books and you're not reconciling because it's above your pay grade and it's difficult and you haven't mastered it. But please, if you're paying a professional, you must require this period. End of sentence. Okay. Part two of Danielle's framework is understanding the revenue. You may think you know, but there's more to it, right? You may offer multiple services and packages, and you need to examine all the different services and packages to determine where you're making the most money. I've had conversations about this. I've talked about it on the Window Treatment for Profit episode, um, podcast, okay? It's breaking down and understanding where the actual dollar bills are made in your business. This is critical. Do not make assumptions. Figure it out from the data. All right, then you can move to part three of the framework, expense. Danielle takes cutting costs a step further by organizing everything into three buckets, required costs, personal perks, and everything else that's left, okay? This helps determine what's not serving you in your business, okay? This also helps identify key performance indicators. Danielle picks apart everything and zeroes in on every single expense to figure out what each return is on your investment that you're making and so that you can decide which costs are worth keeping, right? Once this is done, we can get to step four, budget. This is Danielle's favorite step, and it's probably might be yours as well. This is where you start to plan for the future. What do you want your business to look like at the end of the year? How much money do you want to be making, and where do you want to be? 
love, love, love this. The dreaming part, right? <laughs> okay. Also, this is the tricky part because you don't always know where your next project is coming from and how much you will make until you're up and running and you have referrals. So what Danielle said was that at least know your baseline and what all your expenses are to stay in business. Like the Vincennes calls it your cost to be open number. Okay. She advises to get a line of credit, which by the way, I told you the same thing in my first book, The Making of a Well-Designed business, have a line of credit available to you. You need to have this available to you before you need it. Not when you need it, you need it just there as insurance. Okay. Um, this gives you the space to breathe so that when you hit your lulls, because there will be lulls, there will be lulls. You're in business. Please don't be surprised when there's a lull. Don't, you know, jump ship. Don't throw all the chips up. Don't upturn the table. I guarantee you, you're going to have lulls, just weather the storm, okay? Then you move into Danielle's second favorite part, step five, where you compare your budget to the actual revenue. And you would typically do this once a month, all right? Her step six, this is a step everyone wants to be step one, she said, your cash flow forecast. This tells you where the money is going, but you need your budget in order to have that information. And I love how she adds the three components of cash that will never show up on your budget, your debt, your savings, and your tax or operational savings. Okay, there it is. The not so secret, secret to the feast of fam, feast or famine of your finances. It comes down to taking it step by step and following through with each part of the framework. Okay, it's the difference between being abundant and leading a well-balanced and profitable business or being unorganized and not knowing where your money is or going, okay? So the thing is, it is it is definitely one of those things that you can sit with this framework and work your way through it. Don't expect it to be easy. Don't expect it to be a 20-minute adventure, especially if it's new territory for you. But do expect that if you put the time aside to do it, that you're going to feel really amazing afterwards when you really have done it. it might take you two three five times you might sit with a bookkeeper and ask your bookkeeper to go through it with you you might sit with somebody like the Vincennes if you've got somebody maybe that's your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister-in-law but take the time because it is one of the best gifts that you can give yourself as a business owner okay now, you can work with Danielle in several ways, okay? If nothing else, I encourage you to take advantage of her free consultation call, all right? So she has the option of the Focus CFO package, which is her signature monthly services at the time of this recording, 2023. It starts with an onboarding fee of $24.95, and then it's $17.95 a month. If you're listening to this in three years, I'm sure it's going to be more. Okay. You could also go in with her do it for you fractional CFO package, which starts with an onboarding fee of $49.93 and then $34.95 a month. This is for you if you are a seven to eight figure business and you do not have a CFO because a legit CFO is going to be two and three and four times this figure and a fractional one could be the answer for you. Okay. Or if you just need a strategy call, okay, you can roll in once a quarter for a strategy call for two ninety five. dollars All right. I love that Danielle offers service and packages for all the different levels of where we are in all of our different businesses. Okay. Because this is what it's right. It's all about, right? You don't have to tackle your finances alone, but you do need to understand them to be profitable. All right. Thanks tons, Danielle, for joining us. I absolutely love this conversation. I love being able to empower us in order to take these really good, important steps to make our businesses more profitable. All right. And thank you for listening today. I'm so happy that you joined us. If I'm going to see you, this is airing while we're in High Point. So if you are in High Point, 2023, October, come find me. I've got like seven different panel discussions. Of course, I'm going to go to the IDS party on Monday night. Of course, I'm going to the Kravit party on Sunday night. All the things. Please, please go to my social to see where I am and say hello to me. I would love that. And if I'm not going to see you in High Point, but I'm going to see you in three weeks at Luann Live. Yay. Can't wait to see you there. All right. Thanks so much for joining me. Decide to be excellent.
Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day. Thank you.